Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be looking into some AI functionality. Technically it won't be strictly AI, but uh, the request is about how you can steal items from an AI. So let's just jump into it and see what we will be creating today. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is essentially what we will be creating today. We have this AI character, which uh, is surrounded by pick upable pick items. Uh, just walking up on them, uh, on overlapping them, will make the character pick it up. The character is only allowed to have one item uh, held at once, at one, any one point, and if he picks up a new item, he drops the old one, spawning it a little bit above him. Same rule applies to our character over here. The difference here is that our character also has the ability to steal items. So something that is a little bit in front of him, he will able, be able to take that item from the, the other character that is holding it and put it in his own hold slot. So looking at this, we can see this is what it looks like. So his character picked up the, the little box over there. And uh, I also have a drop item key. So if I press that, nothing happens. But if I walk up to him now and I steal, you can see we have a trace there showing off that we have actually managed to steal it. And I press my drop item, you can see that I dropped the item that I picked up. So this character no longer has an item and we can prove that. Okay, he picked up a new item. Uh, he picked up the new item without dropping another one, which means that, that the, he didn't have an item when he picked that up. And now that we picked up the cone, we can also drop that on top of him and he will now continuously, as he overlaps, drop the old item whenever a new item is spawned on top of him. So we can see that that works. And yeah, so this is the simple steel system that we're going to be creating today. Here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26. Now, in this specific case, I'm going to be building upon the pick up items AI tutorial request that I did a little bit back, but you don't really need to have that. This will work with essentially anything. This system is very simple. It just allows a character to hold one item, but this could just as well be uh, changed a little bit to allow for uh, making use against a character with an inventory system or something similar like that, if that is what you have. To start off with explaining how this works, what we have is uh, these different boxes over here and also this little cone over here. They are representing pickup items, items that you can pick up by just walking over them. This character over here is an AI character, so he will most likely walk over one of these items to pick it up if we start. So looking at it, it looks like this. And uh, if, of course, it does not then. But uh, yeah, by walking over it, you, you can pick it up. And by pressing the R key, you can uh, drop the item that you have currently equipped. So if I don't have an item equipped right now or held, I can't drop anything. If I pick up one item like the cone and then pick up another item like the, the box, then I will drop the previous item before picking up the new item, essentially. And then I can drop it off also if I want to. So what we will be doing is we will be expanding upon this basic system to make it so that we can uh, steal from a character uh, by taking their item and putting it in our hands. Uh, and if you had an inventory system, then you could have something like uh, their item being removed from their inventory system and added to your inventory system, for example. In this specific... Okay, maybe I should turn off the character. Um, <clears throat> In this specific case, we have uh, the same type of character for uh, both the AI and the player itself. So we will be putting all of the logic in the same character, essentially. But uh, And this is the logic that we had from the previous tutorial. But what, what we're going to do, starting off, is we're going to create an event. Just a keyboard. Uh, and let's put it on the T key. So here you could just make an input event if you want to. And what we're going to be doing is essentially, we're going to be checking, are we in front of, or is there a character in front of us right now, uh, which we can steal an item from. And uh, to do that, we will start off by making a line trace. So let's do a line trace by channel. This allows us to trace from our current character and a little bit forward to see if someone is essentially in range. So we can get actor location to determine our start location over here. 
And then what we want to do is we want to take our actor's uh, forward vector. Um, that is probably the wrong one. Uh, forward vector, get actor forward vector. Now this allows us to get the, the direction forward for our current blueprint. So uh, in our case here we have a character that is aligned with the arrow forward. So this is the direction that we want to go in. And by multiplying this, we can say that we want to scan in a certain range forward. So if we were to say, for example, times 400, this means that it will scan four meters in front since the Unreal Engine system is based on centimeters. Uh, so this now added with another vector, meaning this vector where we are currently, will give us a final destination of where we want to scan. So from where we are to 400 units in front of where we are currently. Doing this and putting a debug draw for duration should give us a sense of what that looks like. So if I have this character now and I press T, you can see that a line is drawn, or hopefully you can do. I'll press T a few more times. You can see lines are being drawn <coughs> forward a bit from where my character is. So that's all good and fine. So the next step is to, uh, from this, determine if the character that we're currently hitting with our scan is someone that we can steal from. Now to do that, we can implement an interface. So we can do a blueprint interface. We can call this BPI steal item. And for now, we can just leave it like this. We go back to our character and we can say, uh, this object that we hit, uh, did it, um, is it implementing the imp interface? So if we type in implement, Implement, nope, okay, let's uh, do implement. All right, sorry, my bad. Uh, out hit here is a structure that contains a lot of different uh, things. We want to split this so we get uh, the, the hit actor here to test against. The interface we want to check against is the steel item one. And then we can just put a print here to see if it's working or not. So if it's working, we'll print out, hello, we'll do fine. Uh, since this character and the AI character is the same character, we will implement this interface here by adding the steel item here. So now we have that interface. And now if we go up to this character over here and we press T, you can see, oops, okay, I'm having trouble. There we go. So Nick, now you can see we're, we're pushing the button and we're getting these lines drawn, but the character is not uh, typing out T, sorry, it's not typing out hello. Now, the reason for this is that he is not blocking off our trace. Going into our character, we can see this by, let's see, there's my mouse button. Uh, going into our character over here, we can go and check uh, our capsule component. It has some collision queries on it. So if we go to collision and collision presets, you can see that we have it set as pawn by default. And a pawn by default has visibility, ignore and camera block. And we, on our trace, are using the visibility channel, which means it's ignoring it. So if we were to change this to camera, which was being blocked. Now, if we walk up to this, you can see that it types hello and we get an indicator of where it is actually being hit. And we also get confirmation that it's implementing the interface and typing out hello. So this is all good and fine for the first part. And now we actually want to try and steal the item. So going back to our blueprint interface, which I currently do not have open there, and we can say, on steel item and we can have an output back and we can say that this is the type of uh, pickup that i have currently in this project so i have a bp pickup item and i'm storing it as a class reference if i show you here you can see that the held item that we're keeping track of is just a class reference so when we drop it we spawn on that specific class 
so that's why I'm using this. So this we can call the stolen item. What you could do here is, uh, depending on what kind of system you want, you may want to have something like a first step to check, like uh, you try to, you see if it's implementing the interface and then you may want to get like a widget that displays what available things that you have to steal, for example. Uh, so then it would have to send that information with the blueprint saying, uh, returning an, an array maybe of uh, different items that you can steal. And then you would have to have a sec secondary part where you actually click the items or have a button or some other key or something to uh, confirm. And then you would send another message saying to the, the character that you're stealing item X, for example. In this case, we only have one item in our inventory because we can only hold one item. So this will work okay for that. And that's why this system will be a little bit more simplistic. Uh, but yeah, so instead of having this print, we will now instead say uh, on steel item. And we're getting a message back about the stolen item. Now, the system that I currently have here is that uh, when we picked up the item like I demonstrated, we will drop the current item and then pick up the new item. So for me in this case, I can make use of this interface that I already have here or this function in from this interface. So I will be doing that. So I will go item picked up and the message here and the target is going to be self. And I can say that the stolen item here is the one to be um, seen as picked up. Uh, now, if we go back to the functionality of the interface, you can see we have now on steel item here. So if we open up that graph, we can see that we have this. And we want to return this held item here, but we also want to zero out that we have this item. So what we can do is we can get a reference to this and we promote this to a local variable. So this will be a temporary variable just so that we have one. So we can say uh, local held item. And the reason for this is because we want to zero out the held item before we return here, but we also want to be able to return whichever item that has been stolen. So since we have class references, this is easily done like this. Now going in here again and playing, we can see that the character over there picked up one of the boxes. And when I press my R key currently, I don't drop anything. If I were to pick up this item and dropped it, I can see that it drops out again. So if we walk up to this character now, we should be able to steal his item. So there we go. I should have stolen his item. He should no longer have an item. So if I drop an item now, you can see that I have that box. I can't drop any, any further items. So that is like working as intended. However, we can make sure that he doesn't have his item also, and we can do that by, since he's only allowed to have one item and he immediately drops one if he gets another one, we can walk up to him and drop our current item on top of him to see if he will drop his old item. And you can see that he still has the item, or he didn't drop any item, so that's the only item he has in his inventory now. So if we pick up this item and drop it on top of him, he should drop the cone. You can see he's dropping them. And every time he's picking up the old item, the new item, sorry, every every time he's picking up a new item, the old item is spawned on top of him. So that is essentially how you can make a very simple steel system. And of course you can expand upon this to make it much more complex with uh, inventory systems like I spoke about earlier. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.